What's going on? This is Jack Freeman. Be watching Real Deal with the Kill. Get that album Define Love on all streaming platforms. Get the Chop Not Slot version too. It's going down. Yo, yo. <clears throat> I want to make a toast. You know what I'm saying? To uh, Define Love, the album. Jack Freeman. This is a, a, a very, very, very well balanced album. I told you that before we started. And I, I, I first heard you on uh, Aaron Foster's Bobby Fino project, yeah, like yeah. a few uh, a few months ago, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, man, this is this dude. At first, when I heard the song Lips on his project, I was like, yo, is this is this Bobby Fino? Because I didn't see the I didn't see the name on yeah, it. Yeah. I just, so, going track to track. Yeah. I'm like, man, this Aaron sing. I said, man, this song is dope. It's on repeat. Yeah. And then I come to find out when I had on Grimes or like a few weeks ago, shout out to Jonathan Grimes, who was on. He told me that was you. Yeah. I was yeah. like, whoa, really? This is. Yeah. This oh, he, is was last, he was on the show? Yeah, he was on the show. Yeah, yeah. he was on the show. Yeah, he was on the show. He's still on the uh, the, the park. He's still on there and everything. You can check, check it out on YouTube. For sure. And iTunes and all that. And then um, I found that it was you. Then I had a conversation with Az- Azaria. I don't want to. Azaria, bam. There you go. So I had her. Well, we was meeting up, and she told me about you. I was like, man, it's the same person. Like, yo, I keep mine as well. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So big shout outs and congratulations to that project. I appreciate that, man. So it's Definitely. called Define Love. What I'm going to ask you this. What is love defined for you? Uh, it, it depends on the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the reason why I call it Define Love is because there's a dictionary definition for it, but there's no real definition. Right, so right, like right. Nobody really knows what it is, right. and um, so that's what I wanted to capture in the album was just everything that had to do with love, and um, um, the ups and downs of it, all the things in the middle, the lusty part of it, the uh, the part where you fall out of it, because mm-hmm. there's so many different dynamics of love. But the, the scary part about love is that it feels wonderful, and it also really, really hurts when it ends. So. Um, it, it's everything for me. Like you have to embrace the good with the bad. It's just like being, um, you know, being public or anything like that. You just have to take whatever your life goes, wherever your life goes. You got to take the good with the bad, and that's pretty right. much what love is for the most part. It's just you know, um, even when in the bad, you see the the good in someone, or love maybe being falling out of it. Sometimes mm-hmm. that's love too. You just you just fall out of it, and then it's just not yeah. there anymore. So. Um, it, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot going into. You just gotta listen to the album for the most part, mm-hmm. and just kind of get my take on it. Because in the end, I never really find a resolution to it in the, right. in the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does give you an opportunity to say, "I felt that way one time," or you know, maybe I should have looked at it this way, like right. the way this song said it, or maybe I should have approached it this way. And then maybe you can find um, love and and. You know, based on you know some of the stuff that I went through and things like that, just kind of let you right. know that you're not alone, and a lot of stuff because it's a lot of stuff that, um, it's it's a it's a collection of stories, uh, and ideas formed around maybe you know two or three instances, maybe maybe really one or two uh, yeah. situations that I was in. So, so yeah. before we, if I ask more, when I ask more questions, are you in a relationship now because i don't want to say anything in this podcast and i don't want to get you in trouble i know how that go okay so we are working towards fixing something okay so um whatever that means (laughs) i guess like yeah like there's there's a there's a long answer to that yeah and the short answer is so y'all under construction right now under construction okay all right so i can still ask Questions like I mean, yo, look, you can ask me whatever because I'm not, I don't really have much. So I want to keep this as real as possible. Oh, absolutely. We can so be as we, we got to do that. So absolutely. I'm going to ask you this. When the last time you've been in love or are you still in love with somebody? Oh, yeah, right now. With the That's, under construction? Yeah, like right now. You, you can't, you don't fall out of that. True. You know, not, not what we, yeah, cause I, I, not what, what we feel. You know what I mean? Like right. it's, it's not something that you just, you know. Yeah. You've been with somebody for a long time. You mm-hmm. you know you don't fall out of love with them in a month, yeah, damn. or two months, or a year. A yeah. lot of times, unless it's just unless it's just super bad, unless unless it's just like no way, right, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like if if it's no way, yeah, then yeah, you 
is definitely out. So it, 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 it's some songs on there that's like kind of dedicated to to her on a couple of tracks on that song. I say autobiographical. Yeah. So um, basically every 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 one of them. Most of them. Uh, maybe maybe two or three definitely weren't about her. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly about the relationship I was in before. Those were mainly the ones that where I said I don't really fuck with you no more. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. like d- definitely those are not about her. Yeah. Um. The you know like songs like Pictures of You. Definitely not about her. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perfect for me is definitely a story that kind of straddles the fence of both. Yeah, but leans more towards what would have happened if I had stayed in the situation I was in before. Right. Um, trying to think. Uh, talk about it. I, talk I about it. About talk song. about it is more. Talk about it is more about the. About my current situation, right? So I can um, see that. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, see that. Yeah, it's 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 really about like at first listen, you gotta you hear and you're like, okay, it's jams, or I like this song, and then then the next listen, you're like, oh wait, he not really, he not really fucking with the person he's right, talking to right. right now. You know what I mean? But you know, it takes a few listens, and it takes a like perfect for me is a is a song that it's a palette. Yo. It takes a palate to to really listen to it because it'll piss you off if you're a woman. Yeah. And um, but I I kind of wanted it that way. Yeah. So purposely did so did she know going into it that or did you tell her like yo this album's gonna be most of these songs gonna be about you stay on alert or you didn't say anything at it all? It wasn't really like a stay on alert thing because it wasn't like I was saying anything bad. Right. Right. Like it was just more like like a couple of songs like. Like beautiful, for instance, was a song where, you know, um, she hit me one day. Well, we were talking one day, just random conversation, and you know, just our daily conversation. And she was just like, "Hey, so when was the last time you told me I was beautiful?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I mean, I told you, damn, probably a couple of days ago." Yeah. And then I was like, "Shit," she was like, "You know, I, you know," and then I had to then learn what love languages were. And some people's love language is words of affirmation. Yeah. And um, it doesn't have much to do with insecurity. Yeah. It has mainly a lot to do with just the fact that people just kind of want to know that they're doing a good job or that they look good or that they're beautiful or that they're doing well in school. Like sometimes mm-hmm. your kids need to know that they they've been getting good grades. Right. You know, congrats. You know, good, man. You're doing, you're doing a good job. Or, man, you played a really good game today. Or... Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes your wife needs to know, baby, look beautiful, you know, right. or just randomly. Sometimes we need to know, like yeah. fellas, when we put on that that outfit. Sometimes we we like to know too that yeah. our girl likes us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, it's one of those things, and um, so because of that, you know, because at the moment in my pride, you have to you in your pride, you say, man, I mean, I I, I do this and I do that, and I, you know, and I and I say things to her and I'm nice to her and I, and I love her and she know that right and then you gotta remember that like like if you if you remove your pride mm-hmm. and you just say look this is what would help her feel better yeah. this is what will help us live in harmony <laughs> right? Um, and it's not like you don't think she's beautiful mm-hmm but she just need to hear that. Yes, yeah, she just need to hear it, right? So just, day, so, right? It just, so just say it. So you have to uh so for me, um, what it what it came down to was I wrote a song and um and I just I sent it to her that night before it was even done. Um, like before I even got home and I got home and um like the next day it was just like, oh wow, like, you know. It it was a it was a conversation that um you know, it was a lot of, I guess it was gratitude is what you would say or, right. or just being like, you know, I didn't know you really felt that way. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. so that's what some of those songs came from. Some of those things was just like, you know, stuff that I just knew that needed to be addressed. And, and one way that I could do it was in song form. So Right. Yeah. And with, because <clears throat> I seen too on Spotify that 
you had like a gap between like 02 to 14 with like a 12 year gap of like nah it was 12 12 to 14 Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I must look at okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I fucking woke up at eight in the morning, going to yeah, school, yeah, yeah, and, and seeing two thousand. I thought I seen two thousand. So I was, I was going. That's why I said. Why is it a gap between two thousand? Yeah, that one eye closed. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. that's why I need to stop having these fucking nine o'clock classes because that's the I don't wake up that early. So yeah. I'm looking at two thousand two, but at least I had I had three of the four numbers right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So is that? That fucking erases my goddamn question. I ain't want to say the bullshit no more. It's just, I thought it was a 12 year gap because I wanted to know like what happened between 12 years. I thought it was like making a return or something. Uh, 2012, I was 14. So do you. So, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but no, I'm going to ask you this. Do you think R&B is like. I'm like, because everybody asks that question. It's like, hey, do you think R&B is coming back? You think it's done? I'm going to just ask you differently. I'm going to say, do you think R&B was ever gone? Because my answer will be. Well, my reply to that would be like, hey, I don't think R&B ever left. I just think on the mainstream tip, R&B is not like what it used to be, mainstream-wise. Well, if you look at uh, the answer is kind of double-sided, right? Mm -hmm. At a point, yeah, I do think that it kind of left. Um, The reason why is because the mainstream at the moment was going towards hip-hop. Hip hop was becoming this this huge huge um, entity, and then because of that, um, the mainstream didn't have um, much of an appeal for R and B music. What do you think is left? When do I think it left? Song, when, you, when it, it, it probably it, it probably left around oh eight. If I'm being honest, I think that. Up until like maybe the last couple of years, the last like huge mega hit success R and B album was Confessions. Usher. Yeah, I was. It was say the one. It, that was that was the one. Because and before Chris, that, yeah. before that, it was like, I mean, you had some Chris Brown records that were that were good, but it didn't go diamond. Yeah. And before Usher that, you diamond, had right? yeah, Usher yeah. went diamond, and then you had after that, you had um. Mariah's album, that Emancipation of Mimi album, mm-hmm. was was huge. Right. Um, that album that uh, Mary J put out around that time with uh, Oh my God, uh, she had like uh, quarter million without a, you. Almost yeah, like a quarter million a week. I mean, or something. and I say that because shameless shameless plug, and he, I mean, it's not me, but the producer of all of those albums was Brian Michael Cox from Houston. And um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So he, I mean. Mary J, that Be Without You was, was voted by Billboard the number one hip hop and R and B song of all time. Really? Yeah. Of the of, of out of a hundred songs, it was number one. And what's the name and of this song? Be Without You. It's too strong for too long. And I can't be without you, baby. Because you gotta think about it. When you look at Billboard, Billboard is also thinking about plays and where it's where it's being wow. and it that and um We Belong Together got played. More song. times in the last decade than any song in the history of music. Any song in the history of that decade. Any I didn't know this. Any song. Over Nelly, over any of the shit that we heard all of that time. So that and Confessions was also a because so at a this 10 million record. Like I was like not even 15, 16 years old. I was like yeah. 11, 12. Yeah. yeah, so like, yeah, uh Confessions was Confessions, Confessions came out in 04, 05. 04. Um and so I I remember jamming that in high school. Uh I'm and it sold, it sold 10 million records. It sold mm-hmm. 10 million records. And before that, you had, um, I guess Mama's Gun was was a big record for for uh, for uh, for Erica Badu. Mm-hmm. And uh, you had um, 99, 2000 was, uh, was Voodoo. But mm-hmm. since then, to get back to what we were saying, was it kind of left because what happened was the, the mainstream, the, the, um, The industry went into this shift of like, okay, everybody's bootlegging our music. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no money in it anymore. We're not selling records like we should have been selling. Yeah. Um, when they started cutting the budgets, they started going to the shit that we were consuming. Right, right. At that time, you couldn't block hip hop because everybody was consuming hip hop. As soon as 2000 hit with Jay Z, Nas, Eminem. 
hip hop went to another level. Hip hop went to a completely different level in in the two thousands, mm-hmm. and, and even their budgets got cut, and they weren't selling as many records. But you couldn't no. deny that part. Not at part all. Of, the problem was that the artists that they had on labels at the time, your Maxwells, your Music Soul Childs, your um, your uh, whoever else you could name at that moment in time, Kim, um, Kim, all of these all of these artists, like they didn't see the market for it. Mm-hmm. And so it ended up becoming Urban AC. And and if you look at it now, even now, Urban AC isn't valued um, by anyone else but black people. Mm. We value Urban AC records. We listen to Magic 102. We listen to The Quiet Storm on any station um, in America. There's a mm-hmm. quiet storm in every place. Yeah. There's a market for that. But because everyone else wasn't with it, they wasn't trying to spend no money on it. Right. So... Um, when you underproduce, because there were some good albums that came out around that time. Oh yeah, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't on the level of what they may have spent on a confessions or what they may have, you know, just all types of stuff. And when you ain't got no budget, you also ain't going for the best production. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Either that or the producer is gonna have to um, um, compromise with what you got going on and everybody's right. not trying to compromise and then on top of that people just stopped singing everybody started rapping right or and they're going like to a pop lane as well yeah yeah it's it they start going to the pop lane because pop began and that edm became where the bread was like these dudes mm-hmm. out here making pop records and they and and they're making checks bigger than anything that they would have seen in r&b because r&b when it comes from us only plays on Urban AC Radio. That's true. It don't play on, um, unless you're Beyonce, um, the occasional John Legend record, um, Rihanna's never really made R&B music. It's more like reggae, it, it was, pop. And, but yeah, but like, when it when it's Tank, mm-hmm. it ain't Urban. playing on, it ain't playing on uh, uh, Ryan Seacrest show. No. It's not playing on, um, you know, whatever the top the Z one hundreds and all of that kind of stuff is not playing there. But these EDM records are though. Yeah. This this um Katy Perry featuring Migos is popping. Right. You know, or whatever was going on at that at that moment, like the all the Neo records that he was doing that was that was um pop. Uh Chris Brown had to go to Pop Rock, go get his yeah. bread and, and all that kind of stuff. And I can't hate him for doing I can't fault him for doing it because when it came down to R and B, people wasn't really wasn't really you know, messing with it. It wasn't even really a lot of R&B tours going on. Not at all. I you think know, the last real R&B tour was the last one with Scream. Scream tour with Bow Wow, Chris mm-hmm. Brown, B2K, uh, B5. That was like the yeah. la- I think that was the last R&B yeah. tour. Like that I was like the, mega. I think the emergence of it, though, the reemergence of it came when we figured out the internet and we figured out that as long as you got Wi-Fi, the labels can't blackball you. The labels can't shelve you. If I got Wi-Fi right now, I put out an album. Right. It don't. It don't have to be good, but I can do it. And when the rappers are doing it, then the singers start following suit. And then at that point, all you need is a good singer. All you need is a good songwriter. And even if you're not good, <laughs> you still occupying a lane that people are not really occupying. Yeah. And so. Um, that's where the emergence came. These last five years or so, when when you know people start jumping out here with you know with like SZA or LMA, um, LMA or or Bryson Tiller and Toy The Weeknd and all of these people that like, yeah. regardless of what you think of their music, they utilize the internet the same way rappers did, yeah. and then they developed a, an audience that um, made it to where. It ain't nothing you could, because before that, before that, I could tell you that every label, when they said, oh, we need a new R&B record, they were just going back to old R&B artists and trying to get old R&B, trying to get R- new R&B albums from older R&B artists. So when they needed a new record, they would go call Music Soul Child and be like, where the record at? Yeah. Or, a vibe. They, or they'd wait 14 years for, for D'Angelo. Yeah. And they would be like, all right, this is the emergency, when, when we could have just been, you know, really honing our own skills and doing our own thing. So, yeah, um, yeah it's it, I, I was in it in the tail end of that. Ain't nobody really listening to R&B movement yeah. as well. So, I, you know, that was part of what I did. I just started doing records with rappers. So was you fearful of that? Was you fearful of your career, your music career, that 
had like a what if in your mind, like, man, what if R and B never had its resurgence? You know what I mean? Like, did you ever have that in the back of your mind? Like, man, I'm singing, I'm I'm doing making these R and B projects, but like, what if this not my albums, but like the R and B resurgence mm-hmm. never happened? Well, in the beginning, it didn't. It wasn't that way because I was too. I, I didn't have enough um, thought in my mind to say that it probably, this is probably a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like, nobody really told me this is probably going to be a bad idea. Yeah. And so I just started doing it anyway because I just like making music. So, right. um, so when things weren't getting the traction that it needed to get, um, I didn't calculate that. I mean, people not really buying R&B music at the moment. Right. And, you know, because I also was like, there's no real excuse because people can always just support what they like. Mm-hmm. And um, so when even people, when people were saying hip hop was dead, there was still niggas dropping albums that they liked, but they, they just weren't checking for it. It wasn't in their face all the time. Yeah, exactly. And so, so you can, even your favorite artist for the most part, you can, you can name your favorite singer of the last few years, mm-hmm. the last 10, 15 years or so, and you can find a project on them at least that's at least within five years old. Like, a lot right. of them you can find. You just, you just aren't doing the due diligence of it because Google is free. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and for me, I was always like, if they want to hear it, they're going to find me. But mm-hmm. in the meantime, I'm going to do these rap features while I'm doing my own music because I love rap music too. Right. And I'm going to do as much of that as possible because I also respect a lot of these rappers. And I'm going to um I'm going to tap into their fan base and I'm going to steal that 5 or 10 uh those 5 or 10 fans that um that they got coming to their shows and listen to their music that also listen to R&B. I'm going to grab them for a minute and I'm going to put out yeah. my shit and they're going to like mine and they're going to exactly. go back to listening to their rappers and then I'm going to come back and grab them again and yeah. gonna, and it's going to you know be that way so so how'd you go with Bobby with uh, Aaron Foster? How did that how did that happen? Um, that was random. Um, uh, chill. Chill. Uh, oh, shout out to Chill. Yeah, Chill. <laughs> I need to get back on the show because I got on him about the Rockets in Cleveland. Oh yeah, yeah. I told him I said I said because he was going. He said if Houston and Cleveland played in the finals, I Houston, said yo Cleveland's whooping them. In Houston would have watched, watched them. He would have watched them. Houston would have watched them. Houston would have watched the uh, watch Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. Houston. Do you really think so? Yeah. You didn't know what happened? They wouldn't have gone seven either. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have gone seven. I, and I, hey, love, I, and lo- I, I love and it. I, and I love LeBron. I but, love it. And I love LeBron, but. You know they, what's going to be crazy? I got this prediction. Semifinals, Houston, L.A., Houston home court event. It's going gonna, gonna to go seven games. Automatically, Houston, L.A. is going seven. Oh, my God. I cannot wait to be out in the shoot. city watching that. I don't think they, I don't think they all around shoot well enough. That's fine with me. Hey, we're going to get to that, though. We're going to get to yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to we 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 <laughs> talk about music first. We're going to get to but, that. Yeah, yeah. But Chill, Chill called me, and he was like, yo, I got this. Um, I've been working on Arian Foster album for the last, like, three years, yeah. and I need, um, and I got this beat. You no, know, he got this beat that um, he he wants to, he needs a singer on, and he want to know if you could do it. Well, yeah. I want to know if you could do it. I was like, I said, who? He said, Arian Foster. I said, Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Because I'm also a fan of Arian Foster as a football player. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, I just – so I, I went in a couple of days later. I um, went to the studio, and um, we were standing in there, and um, he played me the record. I was like, man, this is a dope beat. And it's the lip song, right? No, this was uh, Watermelon Sunrise. That's on the same album. That's on yeah, the album. Okay, so yeah, track yeah. two. Okay. And so uh oh, that song was the yep, yep, okay. So we're gonna get to the funny story about lips. Okay. So he um he played me this beat and I was like, damn, that's a dope ass beat. Who um who produced that? He said, I did. I said, You made this beat? Uh, he said, Yeah. Yeah. I said, Okay, that's live. And then he started rapping. And I'm like, Oh, this nigga can really rap. <laughs> like he can't like just he, run the ball. He like can. he's like he's really good. Like he's good, good. Like he's rapper good. Yeah. Like he's MC good. Not like I dabble in this and then I just kind of 
I can spit a couple rhymes. No, he's good by every standard that a rapper can be. In every standard. Yeah. And to the point where it's like, it's scary. I'm like, yo, how are you this good? But I had to remove myself from that thought because I'm like, well, he's a ball player. And, well, he was a ball player and yeah. turned artist. I was a ball player, and I turned artist. Yeah, we always have that that thing. We had that sti- that that stitch of like athletes turning. Well, musicians. because there's always there's been so many guys that have just been bad at it. Yeah, the top this, dog is Shaq. Just, the, the, Shaq is the only one to go platinum, right? And and was dope. And Damian Lillard nice too now. Dame Dame is nice. Dame is nice. But I love AI. That that record was oh trash, god. Though. That record was god that awful. record was boo boo. Oh was, my was god. Trash. I'm sorry, AI, but it was it was not good. I think Great you would know that too. Ass. You, you know, ever heard Kobe? Oh, Kobe was awful. Oh my god, Kobe Ooh, was awful. You serious though? Even when he raps in Italian, it's awful. I don't even know what he's <laughs> he saying in Italian? Italian. I don't even know what he's. I don't even know what he's saying, but I know it's trash. Trash is. He said Kobe. He Kobe's one of the five ten greatest players of all time. Worst rapper. Oh, like god. Silk to Shocker level raps. That was like, <laughs> no, we talking Lil Skies horrible. Yeah, yeah. But, and I like Lil Skies on Wiz Khalifa song, yeah. but no, that was god awful. And That's, so like, yeah, I heard the verse. I heard his I heard his the record. And he wrote the he wrote all of Watermelon Sunrise. I didn't write nothing on Watermelon Sunrise. Wow. And um all I did was structure the hook a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. So um he actually laid the vocal down. I was like, You ain't bad, dog. You're not a bad singer. He's like, Nah, I'm not. Don't fuck with me like that. I'm like, I mean, you're not a bad singer. I mean, I'm not saying that you, you know, you just cold like that, but yeah. you, but you can hold a tune. Yeah. And um, so we just hit it off, man. I did that record, and um, uh, he was like, "Yeah, just like I, you know, come through the crib, man. I play some more shit." So mm-hmm. went to his house like the next day, I want to say, and I played him my album as it sounded at that moment, right. which was you know all of the skeletons and stuff like that. And on the album was lips, and um. He said, yo, that shit's dope. And I played him another one. I played Talk About it. He's like, yeah, that shit's dope. And I played him. Uh, oh, so you had these songs I recorded before yeah, that album dropped. Yeah, that, yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. And so um, he hit me a few weeks later, and he was like, yo, um, what you going to do with Lips? I was like, well, the album not finished, so I got to just get him mixed and all that kind of stuff. And he was like, well, well um, look, man, um, just let me. Let me put it on my album. I put a verse on it or whatever. He was like, so we worked out like a you know little business for that, and then put it on his album. But that's why on his album it sounds differently because he put extra drums and bass lines and stuff like on to kind of hip hop it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I wanted that shit to sound like an acid trip on my album. So that shit was- so that's exactly what I did. I don't even know if there's drums on that, bro. I'm gonna tell you this. I don't know if he's watching right now. But he's going to listen to this podcast eventually. Gary. Monday knows who Gary He's like a brother to me. He's my brother's best friend. We was going to a bar, and I played the Bobby Fino album. And I never told nobody this story. Mm-hmm. So we listened to the album. This is like June. Yeah. You know what? This was going. This was leaving a finals game during the Warriors Cavs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're leaving going to a bar. And I played the album. Say, yo, you got to check this out. This, this song right here, Cole, is Lips. Yeah. I already like the song. Yeah, he heard it. This is exactly what the f- this is exactly what he did. He's listened to the song. He listened like the first a minute thirty. He's like, he's in a passenger seat in my car. He's like, nigga, what the, f- what the? This is Aaron Foster. I yeah. said, y'all, that, that's him, dog. That, yeah. That's him. Oh, they play this shit back. He's he, yeah, yeah. He's doing his hand like this. Yeah, dog, play this shit back. Yeah. This Aaron Foster. We play it to the bar. Yeah. Two three hours later, we leave the bar. Yeah. He said, man, put that song back on. What it's called? I said, Lips. He said, yeah, play that song back. And, dog, we leave him, take him to his house. He is freestyling to the fucking <laughs> song. Like, because he didn't know. He didn't know. Now he know who you are now. But at yeah. that time, he just thought it was Aaron. Like, I, I just thought it was Aaron Foster on the song. Yeah. But I said, there's no way Aaron Foster singing like this. Yeah. And rapping. I said, oh, he's not. He's cold at rapping. Yeah, he's yeah, cold he's at cold, music, yeah. But he ain't, ain't that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was, I was, at first I was like, this nigga gonna fuck up my song with a rap. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, even, even though I knew he was good, I just didn't hear a rapper on it. And he yeah. made it to where it was like, nope, definitely gonna hear this rapper on it. And he right. gonna like it. And, and, and I like it. I, if, when I heard it, I was a 
little salty that he didn't put my second verse on there. But then I was like, no, that's okay. Because when I put my version out, I'm yeah. definitely going to have my ver- that's my. What I heard. That's when I heard it. I was like, okay. so that- like Everything was him. And that's why I told I, I had a debate with some, one of my friends. Uh, saying, of okay, we were saying J. Cole. I said J. Rock. Mm-hmm. Somebody's expectations. We didn't expect, I, well, at least me. Shit, I, I didn't expect J. Rock's album I to be that, that huge. Like, yo, like. I knew that boy was Because J. Rock always went hard, Jack. Yeah. But it wasn't like, yo, album of the year. But Not gotta, to my knowledge. But you got to look at the gradual progression of a lot of stuff. So, like, with me, like, even when I was dealing with rappers, and I still deal with rappers, but like mm-hmm. I, you know, I came around nine oh nine two thousand ten. So around two thousand ten, oh nine is when you heard everybody that's out now. Uh, Kendrick was maybe a year later. Um, yeah, a couple of songs with Currency. Wiz, Wiz was, Wiz was performing in the green room at Warehouse Live. Yeah, the 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 the, the hundred person room. Yeah, the room that the stage is only like. A half a foot off the ground. That was before Cushion Oja. That was around flight school. Right. Around that time. Currency was, was still school. doing this thing. And then, Rick but Ross then when you hear their next project, it it bumps up. Right. So I remember when Kendrick was This before age this before ADHD and all that stuff too. Kendrick Kendrick came What's down he here right when either right before or right after Section eighty dropped. And he was in the studio at the studio room at Warehouse, and it was half full. Mm-hmm. And that was when Schoolboy Q was his hype man. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, so sco- yeah, Schoolboy Q for a long. They always rap, but Schoolboy Q would always travel with them as the hype man. And Rock, I, uh, and at when J Rock was signed, like to his first major label deal, Ken, Kendrick was his was his yeah, hype man. J Rock was is older than his Kendrick. Yeah, Kendrick. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah Ken, okay. But he was also the first to get signed out of TDE. Who he got Kendrick signed, no, uh, Rock. He got okay. signed to, uh, was it Sony? I think it was Sony. Back when they did that, when they was having that New West thing, it was like Dom Kennedy and all that stuff. And I remember he had a little issue with, uh, with Ice Cube because of some stuff that they kind of said back and forth. It was like he was the flagship artist for TDE. I didn't know Rock was that big in 09, 2010. This was like 08, 09, really? something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But he was signed, and then they really didn't know what to do with him. And I think he, he put out an album. He put out an album, and they, and they didn't really – do nothing with it. They know how to push them. Like they that. didn't really know how to push them, so they got their deal. You know, they they got rid of they that that deal out of Sony, and, and it came back. At the time, Kendrick Lamar was on like a artist development deal with Rock Nation. Mm. He was like seventeen, so but That's we didn't right. know who he was. You that was said, when he was still K Dot. You said oh nine twenty ten. Was that, oh, nine, that the same? That was like the that? same round. J Cole was or oh eight something when, like that. Around that time with, with uh, J. Cole, with Jay-Z, with... Yeah, so Rock Cole, Nation. yeah, this was like... Because the mental situation where Kendrick Lamar was on the label as K-Dot. Wow. But he wasn't signed to the label. He was still really young. And, but Rock had a deal. Mm-hmm. And he had a deal for like a year or two. And they got rid of the deal. And then where, where it went from there was like... I saw Kendrick at the warehouse, at Warehouse Live... I remember he stopped his show to shout out OG Ronsi. I remember he finished the show and came out in the crowd and shook everybody's hand and all that wow. kind of stuff. And um and that because I remember he shook my hand. I was like I was like okay that's he's dope. That is and real. then and then the next couple months, Schoolboy Q came around and when Habits and Contradictions came out or whatever, or just about everybody. We did everybody but Kendrick. We did J Cole's first two shows here. We did uh, I want to say we did Big Crit. We did uh, Big Sean's first show here. Big Sean's first show here. He was in the in the restaurant at the House of Blues. He wasn't even in a room at the House of Blues. He was in the restaurant. There's a restaurant at House of Blues. Yeah, the, the first floor. I know Caroline there's a foundation floor. room. No, no, no. The the restaurant downstairs on the first floor. You go oh. in, and oh, there's a stage shit. right there. Yeah, and he okay. Performed. Yeah. God so damn, we, Big um, Sean. Sheesh. So yeah, we we um I saw the progression in a lot of these guys. So when that next room came out, I was like, oh yeah, they out of here. They yeah. definitely out of here. Because the next time I saw Wiz, Wiz did, I think, the music hall at Warehouse Warehouse Live, the big room. And then the next time I saw Wiz, he was at Verizon and was dating Amber Rose. And then <laughs> the next time I saw Big Sean, he had skipped the the uh, the every room in the House of Blues, I mean, in, in Warehouse Live and House of Blues, and he was in the 
big room at a at a warehouse live. The only one that I saw that came straight here really young and sold out warehouse live off top, like off the rip was Mac Miller. Cause Mac was like 18, yes. 19 and they was like, yeah, Mac Miller's coming. I'm like, who the fuck is Mac Miller? And, and kids was out and, and they were like, uh, nah, you got to come and like, check this shit out. And I was like, That's man, true. I was like, so I, I, I was like, I'm gonna go. Cause you know, whatever. I'm going to go. That's- so we go, and I look out in the crowd, and that shit is dumb packed. It was so packed that they had to open the studio room for, oh my for the overflow. And then, and what was so crazy about it was the bar wasn't even open. And the bar wasn't open because nobody in the crowd was 21. It was people there with their parents coming to see Mac Miller. Like, I saw dads in the middle of the crowd, like white people just. I saw dads in the middle of the crowd chilling. Mainly and I, white folks, right? Mainly white folks. Mainly white folks. I saw kids I saw kids get kicked out because they were trying to sneak behind the bar and get liquor. I saw, um, I saw weed smoke in the crowd. Oh, these kids, all of these kids was high schoolers. Straight uh, khakis, uh, sperries. Um, like every Hollister, like, just, American Eagle. Yeah, like, like on some, and I want to say it was like a Thursday or a Friday or something. It was yes. like a, and so I'm out there and I'm like, yo, this kid's 19, and that was when Mac was like super in party mode. I mean, when I met him, he was bloodshot red, eyes was, he, he shot at Bun out, brought Bun on the stage. Bun came out there with a bottle of Hennessy. Oh. Uh, Mac passed him the joint on stage. I said, "This kid's nineteen. <laughs> What's going on?" But like, I, you know, you see those progressions. So like, when you say like, you you got to look at the way that TDE kind of runs their situation, mm-hmm. and you got to like, you know, that the next time you hear a J Rock, is gonna be huge. That's why, because when that when that uh. The one with future. Um, miss me with that bullshit. You ain't running on your tourist. Well, I don't want a song. The 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 song. Um, oh, when? No, not when. No, no, no. Uh, the um, King's Dead. King's Dead. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. On sure. that Black, Black Panther, Panther soundtrack. Right. Once I heard that, I was like, oh yeah, this one finna be. It's finna be because Nine Double Five Nine was like a critical critical acclaim album. Mm-hmm. It was a super dope album, but this one is the one that popped off. And that is definitely one of the albums of the year. I think it's the best album of 2018. It's it's definitely I I I like it. I put it up there. I put um I put Arian's album up there. I put um Yeah. Who else? Who else? I put YG's album. YG's album is dope. YG's album I love. You know what's crazy about I YG? Like YG. I don't care what you say, I love you know YG. What's cr- bro. No, you know what's crazy? That last album I wasn't with. I wasn't really messing with but this album i don't know why i like i don't know why i like yg so much but i love yg i'm gonna tell you something about yg i i like yg YG, if you need a hook let me know but yeah for sure for sure for sure and i just think this like i like his first i mean he put out like the very first like the like the original mainstream album b p oh real quick somebody just um hey kelly what's she saying the other one that sold out warehouse off rip was definitely Drake. Oh, for sure. He, he, definitely Drake. He got founded in definitely Houston. Definitely Drake. He got well, founded in Houston. Well, well, the first time he came down here, he was performing at Next. Remember Club Next? I was too young. I was in high He was school. at Club Next. That bitch was packed. Really? I was in college then. It, it was okay. huge. It was huge. And I remember uh, I remember a dude telling me, man, this is dude named Drake from, Cal- um, from Canada, man. Uh, uh, he got this shit called Comeback Seats, man. He about to sign with Young oh Money. Oh, my God. And he Comeback Seats was so cold. And they was like, man, he finna be. When I heard him, I said, oh, yeah, he's going to be bigger than Wayne. And, did you, and but did you think Wayne? Did you think Drake's gonna turn into Drake he is now, or you thought he's gonna stay that same conscious Drake? He was in comeback season because he sounded like a conscious rapper. He's always been a chameleon. Yeah, he's always been a chameleon. He's always just kind of done with. I mean, early Drake was was influenced by by Fonte. Okay. Later Drake, middle time Drake was probably influenced mostly by Houston. 
Um, and then, he, and he, then he seen the women out here. He was like, "Yo, like I gotta like influence yeah, my shit with." Last couple of years, last couple of years, Drake has been like a lot of Afro beat, a lot of you know. Um, he met a reggae. girl. I just think he meet girls within different ranges. I think I don't know Drake personally. I wish he come on my show one day. That would be like fucking ridiculous. But he not gonna do it. Yeah, I know. Right? He don't do interviews. He don't do. Interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I would just it. think like, yo, like I think Drake just find different women in different like. He found like a Houston chick around that time. So far gone, Bria Miles. He I mean, he ain't never stopped. People forgot Bria, Bria's interlude was Bria Miles. He ain't, he ain't never, he ain't never stopped dealing with Houston chicks though. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know did. at that time Bria's interlude. I didn't know who the fuck Bria Miles was. I didn't know who Bria was in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. No Instagram. So now mm-hmm. I know. Ten years later, like yo, that's who you was talking about. I mean, he, he uh, you know, he 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 gets a lot of his. I mean, it's just like anybody else. This is what I say about Drake. This is like what I, my bad, my bad, my bad. Good. This is what I say about Drake. He's one of the biggest names in the world, right? Him, LeBron, yeah. Beyonce, yeah. right? Oprah, right? Yeah. So when you're a top-notch person, mm-hmm. you're supposed to have an, an untouchable, exotic woman that is like so no that she usually it, it's not it's like to a point like you can't but but watch this watch this though this is why I say this I can understand you get a girl that's like she's bad and she's like touchable kind of sort of mm-hmm. okay for example you watch baseball yeah Justin Verlander he dates Kate Upton right model right nice as hell beautiful mm-hmm. not the most exotic but she's very beautiful you know what I'm saying I mean, it also depends on what you think is exotic Drake. Johnny Blaze. Not exotic. I, I, exactly. Not exotic. Lyra I mean, Delore. but you like what you like, though. Malaya. Uh, strippers. I mean, but you like what you like, though. You're supposed and, to and, drive a Bugatti, and he's driving Ford F-150s into Toyota Corolla. Well, look, Drake is... Look, we know that about Drake, though. Drake Drake likes strippers. And he he likes... First of all, he likes fat asses. Where do you get a fat ass? Well, you can get a fat ass just about anywhere in Texas, but yeah. the best place to get it is the strip club. Where where they fuck with rappers, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's it's not a new thing. Like we ain't never just we know we know we know what Drake's type is. Like the only the farthest thing out of his type that we've ever just seen him with is Rihanna. But like everybody, I mean, that's just what it is. And it's just you know, I mean, we can go down that list of just think about it. What if Jason never had Beyonce? You know what I mean? Like Jay Z still Jay Z, but like when he'd have he got a, Beyonce, he'd have another one. It, Elevated to like, yeah, but he, yeah, I, I get it, yeah, that's perfect, like, that's a perfect synergy, and that's the thing. Where, Imagine Jay Z talking to a chick that strips in Kings of Diamonds, yeah, but but we not gonna act like Jay Z almost fifty years old. We are not gonna act like Hove wasn't out here. Get the Hove did an interview with Luke, with Uncle Luke, where two girls strippers are literally having sex next to them in the middle of the conversation. Like this is oh not. God, well, I would we, love that so we, much. This is Hove is not. We're not gonna act like Hove wasn't. Wasn't not Hove. I'm not gonna. Aaliyah was. Aaliyah was oh, yeah, Dame. Yeah, yeah, Aaliyah, Aaliyah was yeah. Dame. Aaliyah was Dame. Okay. That wasn't. That wasn't Hove. Yeah, um, God damn. What there was it? always. There was always the talk about him and Free. There was always the talk Free was about, straight. About yeah, he he had a few. Look, but they wasn't worse than Malayan, Lyric Galore, Miracle Watt. He, yeah, but we're not, well, we not going to act like, we're not going to act like Hov Jack, didn't have a stripper or two. Jack, he he might have had a stripper or two. He hunk up women's fake stripper jerseys in the club. I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, I, I mean, but who the fuck his, that was. I said, why? Yeah. Galore. I mean, is it is it simpy? Yeah, absolutely. But it's a lot of, the, you. It's a lot of it's a lot of celebrities out there that like a certain type of thing. That you wouldn't even imagine. Robert De Niro loves black women. Oh, I don't blame him. Black, you go I mean, black, you yeah, never go back. But we talking about Robert De Niro when Robert De Niro was always Robert De Niro, and he could have had all the white women and all the models that he all probably had, and he could, and he probably has. But he loves black women, and you would just never know My that. My thing is this: Drake Kim, I just seen on on social media that he's dating an eighteen year old. Now, okay, and don't get that. That's bad. a little young. That's a little, little. but He's then you 30. also got to remember that. No, it's very young. I'm not. I'm not dealing with nothing eighteen. But um, I look. Not, 
nothing that nothing that Drake does with women surprises me is what I'm saying. So I don't like I don't have these high expectations for guys to like certain you know things because we also like fame will do a lot to you right Mm -hmm. um which is one of the reasons why it took us 14 years to hear another d'angelo album right you know one of one of d'angelo's one of the the mothers of d'angelo's child is angie stone everybody knows that not me and his fame rose after voodoo to a point where um on a way on their way to one of the many award shows that he was probably nominated for he's in a limo with Angie Stone wow. on the way to the to the award show they pull the 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 limo over and tell him you cannot walk the carpet with Angie Stone not with the big dark skin girl we're going to put this model in here with you and you're going to walk with her not the mind, they were in a full fledged relationship at that point. Like these are are true stories here. So <clears throat> when again, fame will do a lot of shit to you. So you, as, a, as, a, as a as a as a um, I don't know as a celebrity, <clears throat> you got only a couple things that you can do. You can either date publicly and date all these people that are public and 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 only date within your tax bracket and all of that kind of stuff and, and date all these different people or whatever, for men or whatever. Or you can just date the women that you like, right? right. You can date the regular girl that's always been down for you for, for the longest. Like, we don't ever see Kendrick Lamar's wife. Never. I've seen her a couple of times, but I've seen her. I've never seen J. Cole's wife. And I'm completely okay with that. Like, I just don't ever want to see these people's significant others. I mean, if they just happen to also be celebrities, then obviously we can't get away or get around that. But I don't ever really want to see these people's significant others, honestly. I just don't, I just don't really be caring because what happens is then the thought of, well, you're supposed to have this, you know, brew is brewing. Like, it just ain't, you know, because you got to remember that people are just regular people. And some people just like strippers. <laughs> and and I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think I want to be with I don't think I I don't ever want to be with Malaya. I don't ever really want to be with, you know, any other other strippers he's been linked to or anything like that. Oh, Angie Stone's beautiful. Beautiful woman. But wow. the industry says differently. The industry is is because I I can guarantee you, there's people in the industry that probably say, "You know, she date that stripper," or or whatever whatever the situation calls for. People just think that status is what makes couples. When if you really think about it, a lot of people that say that don't have any status. Right. They they live their lives through other artists or other celebrities and stuff like that. You know, women are the same way. Like when it comes to celebrity. <laughs> like he's not, he's not gonna date your FedEx man, and if her and Jay Z ever fall apart, I guarantee you the next guy she dates is going to be a mega billionaire, true, or very successful at something. Serena Williams is dating the the owner of what Reddit? I think it's Reddit. Yeah, Reddit, the CEO of Reddit. Right. You know what I mean? It ain't a whole lot of it ain't a whole lot of places you can go when you're a celebrity. And Netflix, he just who, so happens to keep it. Yo. Drake just so happens to keep it low, and well, keep it down with with the strippers because he just, you know, he's also a, a half white Canadian kid. True. So, it's this beautiful woman in Toronto. Houston's a different beast. You think <laughs> like, Houston got the best looking women. I think Houston has beautiful women. I just think that it's. I think Houston has beautiful women, and I think it's just different. It's just different. The women I see in L.A. are vastly different from the women I see in Texas. Right. And that's just kind of what it is for me. Like, the Houston, the, the women I see in Florida are different from the women I would see in, in Texas. I mean, Texas is a different breed of, of animal. Right. You know, Toronto is just a melting pot of different stuff, and everybody's, you know, it's just like a, 
it's like Ellis Island for everybody. Everybody comes from somewhere else, so it's just a different thing. But right. I mean, hey, if that boy likes strippers, man, I don't, I don't know, man. Drake, I just I, if I'm the biggest name, and if I, if my name became one of the biggest in the world, I have to like first of all for me being born and raised in Houston, I'm not as fascinated with strip clubs like I used to when I was 18, 19 years old because yeah, of my but, first thing. But when I get older, it's like. I gotta watch how I move and everything. Yeah, but then. you gotta re- realize that the the stripper level attractive women are also just walking the streets of Houston, and they're not even strippers. That's they, true. They they everywhere. So when I when I see a yeah. lot of these women, I'm like, yeah, you're attractive, and you and you know you got that ass. You gotta question them. But you also are like, I can go to a club, I can go to a bar, I can go to. I can go to church and find – I can find you again. Church has some badass women. So you right got to be a very special human being for me to, like, just be fucking with you because of that ass. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's got to be something else left. So Jack, I tell you, bro, like, I haven't been to church in a long time, but church has some of the baddest women. Look, I'm – You're going to hell, man. This might – look – I might. Oh, you going to hell? I might offend people when I'm finna say. You know what? Do you think I'm finna go to hell with it? With that? Just imagine what I'm finna say right now. So I've been wanting to get this off my chest for like a week, right? So I said, man, I, what I'm finna say is my it, it might offend. I think she's got a lot of pussy back in the day. I say this to say that. Oh, that's yeah, why, that's you why definitely I, going to hell. For that. This, is why, <laughs> this is why I say this because. He walked on water. We got lawyers. We got athletes. We got all these things. But we only work a, per- a small percentage of our brain. Right. Jesus walked on motherfucking water. He he woke the motherfucking dead. Now, he think- did all this supernatural shit. And you, you, don't think, you don't think females back in the day was busting it down and trying to throw that ass for Jesus, my nigga? I mean, they I'm threw just, it. I'm just, people think like, oh, kill you, trying to offend. Look, they probably oh. threw it to him. They probably threw it to him. You don't think but he I took don't that? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if he took it, but come on. You don't think he was getting that much pussy back in the BCAD era? Look, man, his DMs was lit. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not going to say that back like, in the day. I'm not going to act like Jesus' DMs probably wasn't lit. Bruh, wasn't, you steep. Wasn't fire. No, they just you know walked I mean? to like, this nigga. Jesus' and, DMs was probably. No, they walked to this nigga and just flash. Jesus' DMs and was just probably, bent their ass over and bust their pussy over for Jesus. You're going to hell, man. First look, class. I'm sorry. Jesus, I know. Look, Jesus may have gotten plenty of offers, and I'm not finna sit up here and act like. Yeah. Uh, so, this we're gonna do with this podcast. So, since the video's not gonna go as long, we're gonna the rest is gonna go on audio. 